Hello and welcome back to AEF TV in association with Angerati. I'm joined now by Patrick from uh, Car Power Shit. Uh, the clue of what you guys do is in the name, I, 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 I guess. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're talking a little bit off air and uh, a, a trend coming through all the uh, interviews is, well, there's clearly a need for power in Africa. Uh, um, and that's stating the obvious again. But also, a lot of the projects take a long time not just to get finance, forget that for a second, but then to also build. I mean, there was one project that went from start to finish in uh, uh, sort of, um, uh, what was it, eight months, but that's a solar project, so that has intermittency in it as well. So, you know, there's clearly a gap, and, I, and, I, and I'm laying this out for you, because you guys, you guys you. fill it, but it, 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 just tell me a little bit about how that works in practicality. Well, today you mentioned correctly that there was a gap. There is a huge demand and an unmet demand and a very big suppressed demand also in developing countries. The financing, we take that out of it. Project financing can take anywhere from 18 months to 24 months. That is a delay where that demand is not being met. Then we have the actual tendering process, the EPC works, the installation, the commissioning, before you actually get to commercial operations. So what we, are, what we our market, we are a medium term provider, where we will actually fill that three to five year gap from the end of financing through to actually permanent installation being delivered from the commercial operation date of that power plant, we'll fill that gap of three to five years. We, Car Powership, uh, our speed of delivery is within 120 days. That's what we are targeting and that's what we will be bound by in formal commitments to deliver. Uh, the bigger, larger benefit of that is the permanent power plant that's been financed and being constructed is p potentially either going to be running on heavy fuel oil or natural gas. The product is a dual fuel, so it will run on heavy fuel oil or natural gas, and it is inter-switchable. Inter so as the country develops through that three to five year window, gas may not be readily available for the, for the power ship. So what we'll do is we'll start and commence the contract on heavy fuel oil, and as gas becomes more reliable and stable and available in the country, we will then switch to natural gas, driving the cost down further uh, to get to the, the parity with uh, IPP pricing. Yeah, there will be a premium there, but it, it minimizes that gap. And, and in terms of, uh, uh, say, this may be oversimplistic, but is it as simple as saying, look, we need this, one of your ships comes along, and parks itself in the right place and we're off. It basically it is as simple as that. Right. Yes. You know, we they, they are mobile, they're 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 floating the floating power ships, they've got propulsion. Um, we bring it into uh, we don't just park it, we berth it yeah. uh, alongside the alongside a harbour yeah. or we can moor it uh, offshore and bring the power ashore either through subsea cable or through a, a transmission uh, line and bring it into the network. And, and, and that's how it then connects onto the... Uh, that, onto, that's onto how it the, connects in, that's how it connects into and, the grid. And, and how does the fuel supply work? I mean, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, how does that get onto the ship? Oh, because, oh. because there's a point when... There's you a will tank, run out of fuel, run correct, out of fuel. Yeah. correct. Well, we've got on the vessel uh, approximately 12 days of storage. So that allows us to operate for 12 hours, 24 hours a day. And we have a separate uh, larger fuel storage that can be floating alongside. And that will be the, that will be the bunkering point where your actual fuel delivery would be uh, bunkered into. That will store, so in essence, we would have um, one, once a month drop of fuel into the bulk storage and then we take that into the settling tanks on board for the 12 days and it's just a continual process. You also have the ability if there is storage tanks onshore you can use the storage tanks onshore so but they're not always readily available so you have to have the ability in-house 
to cater for that, and that's and that's one of the things we do. And uh, and uh, uh, again, th this may be a crazy question, but a lot of people have been talking about uh, sort of uh, a blended generation, and yeah, and you've got heavy fuel oil and uh, gas. Uh, have you guys ever thought of? Putting a couple of wind turbines on the top of the, uh, uh, the ship as well to uh, to get some. To add it the, or, or some, is that too complicated? In some vessels that are in some vessels that are space, yeah. um, generally uh, space is a little restrictive. I think the, as a as a concept out there as a blue sky initiative, there potentially could be um, a floating uh, wind farm. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't never rule anything out. Going forward into the future, we do have uh, our vision and we're in process of uh, constructing a power island. And the, okay. pow the, the power island is where we take the power ship and alongside we have a floating storage and regasification vessel. And that is fueled from uh, an LNG tanker. Uh, the storage will carry approximately 45 days of liquefied natural gas for the power ship to consume and feed that power ashore. And that, that fight, that's a 500 megawatt standalone power island that will be located five kilometers, 10 kilometers offshore. So it's not going to be an intrusive power plant in the city, where a lot of African uh, power plants are, are, they're in the city. There are some power plants along the Mediterranean that are in prime real estate on the coastal area. And I can take Lebanon, for example, where we have a power ship, 200 megawatt, and we are the size of a football pitch in comparison to uh, a Dubai shopping mall size for the the actual permanent power plant and it's in prime real estate on the shore of the Mediterranean. Yeah. So we will, in the power island, we will be five to 10 kilometers offshore and it will be a standalone permanent. And, and is that a, a more of a long-term solution then? Is that how you're envisaging the power that, island? That, the power island will be uh, probably minimum contract period of around 10, 10 years. Yeah. Uh, and then we can go beyond that. But when you're putting an infrastructure in like that, we would not be adverse to taking a 15, 20 years permanent. And that's competing then with your IPPs. And that again, on the upside for, for Africa, is that it is already being financed. It's not a case of having to justify the it's project like a financing. It's a prefab power plant. It's a pre prefab power plant. Yeah. Um, so that, that is underway. Uh, internally, that uh, as we as we move forward, and that is our future, which will be the power islands. Because that was, that was one of the questions I was, I was going to say to you. You're, you're in a way you are kind of limited because if if you've got all four vessels in use at any one point in time, and someone calls you up, you may not be able to deliver in 120 days because you've got obligations and things Correct. like that. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Well, we are. We have uh, a shipyard, one of the largest private uh, shipyards in, in Europe, where we are producing the vessels. So we're producing the power ships, we're producing the FSRU, and we're producing the carrier. So it is being kept, the, the, the design, the engineering, the procurement, construction, the project management, and the deployment is all being carried out in-house right. for that control. And yes, we are pre-financing and having the ability to continue to build through a production line so that when we're negotiating we always have a vessel ready to come out of the shipyard to go to work to go to work so I mean that that's fascinating and just in terms of if we could just role play this scenario let, let, let's say I called you up and said I want one uh, and how from the start of that conversation, and obviously deals need to be signed, and you need to make sure that I can pay your bills and, and all that sort of stuff. How quickly can one of these uh, power ships be built effectively from saying, right, if you were, firing the starting gun? If you were building the power ship from, from you, you would be looking at somewhere around two, two and a half years right. to build. If you were building one off, I need to go build one and go do it, it'll take you two and a half to three years. We, we've shortened that entire span into 
120 days realistically because we are building and prefabricating the next lot of exhaust systems, the boilers, the transformers, the staircases, the ladder racking for, it's a standard modular design. Right, so, so you, we're, you just got to build it together. We're just, it's a Lego block. People right. talk about Lego blocks and plug and play power systems. The way that we build a power ship is basically a Lego modular approach. That's pretty phenomenal, 120 days. Well, the, 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 to, to, to put something I don't know anyone else that's delivering uh, a heavy fuel oil power plant uh, operational within 120 within 120 days. Uh, that is pretty stunning, and and and, and one of the beauties about uh, that type of fuel as well, it, it, it supports base load, right? You know, you know, I get tired of saying it, but it, you need to say it. Renewables have intermittency issues, right? Uh, so by being able to, I would imagine, put something that can, well, the gas part of it may be able to ramp, and I'm not so sure about the heavy fuel oil, that can be a nice blend uh, within energy mix as well. It, it does add to the energy mix of a country, you're right, you're correct. Renewables do have intermittency problems, and, but they do have a place in the market, they do have a place in the market. Uh, onshore here within Turkey, we are developing a 100 megawatt geothermal power plant that is now under it's now under construction. So we are also in the renewables as well as um, the, the the typical thermal power plants. And for the power ship, what is what is unique about it? No one else is doing a power ship. What makes it game changing for Africa? is the Africa's base load predominantly is heavy fuel oil fired because of the cost, the actual delivered cost of energy you can get to. So what we've done to change the market, and in essence there is a new game in town, heavy fuel oil is now available mm. as a short and medium term mm. solution that was never available before. It was always diesel, diesel, diesel. And mm. diesel cost is extortionate. But there is, there is certain needs where it has to be played. Yep. And it has, it has a part in, in the marketplace. Yep. But there is now a new game in town with an option to go to heavy fuel oil mm. and natural gas, mm. driving down the cost of Africa. If I take a standard diesel generator, you will be putting diesel in there. You will, at the cost of diesel around Africa, you will be around 28 cents. Right. For the fuel component alone. Oh. The entire fuel component of the power ship using heavy fuel oil and capacity is substantially less than that fuel component alone for diesel. And that is why Africa now has an alternative and an option. Can you put some percentages on that? So if I if I say diesel is the hundred percent mark, if you go to heavy fuel oil in terms of the cost, how much does that reduce it by? We it, we would we would be. I would, I would be confident to suggest that we will there is at least a thirty percent saving on right. using right. heavy fuel oil versus using uh, diesel. Right. And that's significant in itself as well when you're trying to build out the infrastructure. We're coming to the end of our time here. I just wanted to, as a final question, to talk to you a little bit about the plant, the geothermal plant you're building in Turkey. And is that something you guys have always done or is that also a part of the next step with all the uh, skills and experience you've got is to uh, start moving into uh, that sector. The company's been in the core. The core of the business from right. Caradine is holding is energy. Right. They, okay. they are a, they are an energy trader. They were the first cross-border energy trader in Turkey. They, they were the first uh, energy exporter, etc. So, energy is their core business. They have permanent land-based IPPs today running on hydro running on uh, uh, gas, running on HFO, and soon to be uh, geothermal within Turkey. And that is the core business with the energy trading and distribution group. Right. 
whereas the power ship business is what takes this company to an inter to an interna to an international level. Because you, yeah, it's not just Africa. Everybody needs energy. Everybody, everybody yeah, every, every, the world, the world it. is energy deprived. Yeah. and if people look at energy now and electricity, once you have it and you've tasted it, you've sampled it, it becomes a way of life. It becomes a basic human need now to actually be able to throw your light switch and turn and turn your lights on at night for children to study, for parents to communicate with their children, whether they're at university or whatever, you have to charge mobile telephones, yeah. TV entertainment, air conditioning. And the World Cup, for instance, Africa is a football loving nation. Yes. You have to have reliable electricity to support the TV, to be able to go watch it. Yeah. And also, I suppose, to keep the beer cold in the, in the fridge. Exactly. And, 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 and I've had personal experience of that. It's just like I, uh, uh, we had a power outage about three months ago. And, uh, it's quite rare in the, in the UK, you know, and, uh, and it was out for four hours. I, I, I was lost. I was like, what do I do now? What, what, what do you do? You're on the internet and, you, and all of a sudden you can't finish what you're doing because the battery's gone and, and there is no, you don't have the UPS systems and the little backups, and the, the niches that you put in, in Africa to sub, try to support yourself. And uh, yeah, it is a big, it is a big uh, impact on what is considered just a way of life. Exactly, exactly. Well, it, it, it's been a pleasure talking to you and uh, uh, fascinating to hear about the, uh, the work you guys are doing and, uh, uh, you know, uh, and uh, as I described it uh, uh, when we were off air, this whacking great power ship. You know, <laughs> whacking, great, whacking great power, whacking great power, power ships. <laughs> there, are, there, are, there, are, there is a big fleet of them now and it's, and it's growing. Excellent. Thank you very much. No problem. And, thank you. Uh, thanks. And thank you as well for watching. Uh, it's been a, uh, another uh, interview from Africa Energy Forum. Um, we're just about to uh, break for lunch, which the clue was in the clanking in the background. And uh, thanks again for watching and uh, look forward to seeing you online soon.